The possibility of a rain deficient summer is making many state governments in India nervous. Why do Indians do a monsoon watch? What does it mean to citizens, companies and governments? Here is a quick take. I am Smita Prakash. India's population today is about 1.4 billion. 60% of this population depends on agriculture directly or indirectly for sustenance and more than half of this is dependent on the monsoons which occur from June to September. If the rainfall is below 90% of the average it is classified as deficient and above 110% is excessive both of which are harmful to the crops. Currently, the estimates vary from 96% to 94%, which means nearly normal monsoon. If India gets a normal monsoon this year, it would be the fifth straight year of good monsoons. A good monsoon means a better harvest, more income in the hands of farmers, and spending in rural areas on goods goes up. Agriculture exports of food grains, such as rice, goes up and there is more disposable income going all around. Industries such as retail, food processing, mining, aviation, tourism, all look towards a reasonably good monsoon for their sectors to thrive. The predictions have to be altered nowadays because of climate realities. Last year, we had an unusually strong heat wave in March. This year, unseasonal rains in March, both of which impacted on agricultural produce, which in turn impacts on industry. The unseasonal rains of this year's March will probably impact on the quality and quantum of wheat procurement. More than half of the wheat produced is from the state of Punjab, but due to water logging in ready to harvest crops, the grains in many areas have got damaged. The export ban on wheat has been extended and the government says that will continue as long as domestic supplies meet the food security needs. The Med Office has predicted normal to below normal rainfall over parts of northwest India, west central and northeast regions during the southwest monsoon season. El Nino conditions have been predicted by scientists for both in 2023 and 2024 and that could mean lower levels of rainfall even during the monsoons. This year could be the hottest on record, fueled by climate change. The last eight years were globally the hottest on record and that reflects the long-term warning driven by greenhouse gas emissions. The last major El Nino event occurred in 2016 and is said to have affected more than 60 million people around the world. Summers in most part of India bring brutal heat. Monsoons are the blessing everyone looks for. From the dark and welcoming clouds over the Malabar, India, where the southwest monsoon first makes its entry in June, to the voluminous rains over Mumbai. The scant but welcoming rain over the deserts of Gujarat and Rajasthan. The unpredictable rain over Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, often leading to flooding. The torrential rains over Bengal. The northern plains awaits the Ganga to swell and its bounty and entire socio-economic life gets impacted within those months of the southwest monsoon, which is June to September. We even have a monsoon session of parliament. With 2024 being the year of elections, the BJP government would not want a negative impact of monsoons on the economy. India's economy is still too highly dependent on the agriculture sector, which in turn is dependent on monsoons. If we have a deficient monsoon or rising temperatures due to El Nino, then besides its impact on agriculture, it will even cause a wide range of health problems such as disease outbreaks, malnutrition, health stress and respiratory diseases. Now that we have an early warning given by climate scientists early in 2023 about El Nino effect this year and the next, it should enable state and central governments to discuss and implement contingency plans. Oh.